Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I've had a few recent comments on some of my various videos from folks asking about Pixelmator Pro because a number of months ago, you can find the Pixelmator Pro playlist. That's a lot of P's. Pixelmator Pro playlist uh, right up here. Uh, but anyway, a few months ago, I did a number of videos around it and then I kind of quit. Um, and really, I just got busy with Luminar stuff, which I'm going to continue doing and on one stuff, which I've uh, really enjoyed and will continue doing as well. But I had some comments recently and people are like, hey, whatever happened, I thought you were going to do more videos about Pixelmator Pro. And honestly, I, I thought so too. But you know, I get busy and whatever. Anyway, I'm back. I'm in Pixelmator Pro. And I thought what I would do is take a video, not a video, a photo, and uh, edit it two different ways. Because one of the things I really like about Pixelmator Pro is that there are just so many tools and options. And on, honestly, like you could be endlessly creative using this product, which is one of the great things about it. So I thought I would take the same photo and edit it two different ways, a kind of a traditional way and then kind of a creative way. If you're new here, um, I like the creative stuff, uh, number one. And number two, if you're new to Pixelmator Pro, it is Mac only. It is sold through the Mac App Store. I'll put a link to their website down below if you want to go read about it, but it is available in the Mac App Store. The great thing is it's like 40 bucks, which honestly I think is an incredibly reasonable deal. The bang for the buck that you get, you know, so much power, so much capability in this app for 40 bucks, which is like probably half or less of many other apps. It is effectively, in my opinion, a replacement for Photoshop in a lot of ways. Let me just get into it. Here's a photo and I'm kind of set up here with uh, various tools and filters that I want to use. This is a, a long exposure from Haystack Rock in, um, Oregon, but the first thing I want to do is get into the white balance a little bit, and I'm going to go about a negative 11 or so here on the uh, temperature, and on tint, I'm going to go uh, the other direction, and this is my traditional edit, to be clear. Um, I just wanted to amplify these colors. It is a long exposure. I think the photo looks pretty cool as it is. Of course, I'm a little bit biased because I took it, of course, but um, I kind of want to bump up some of the colors and just really just kind of pop that sunset because it was a nice sunset, but it doesn't exactly look the way I want it to look. And that's one of the things I love about digital photography is I can go make it look the way I want it to look. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. And this is because it's, uh, you know, it is a little bit dark. I'm going to pull highlights down just a little bit. I don't want them to get out of control. I do want these shadows to come up a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, maybe at about 20. So, so far, let me show you the before and after. There's the before, there's the after. I think a better looking image, but not at all what I want to do. I want to keep uh, adjusting this further. One of the great tools in Pixelmator is this color balance. As you can see, it gives you amazing control. You've got these three different color wheels, highlights, midtones, and shadows. I'm just kind of playing around with this a little bit. I'm going to take the highlights over here kind of toward the pink and red and go that direction. And this left slider basically helps you increase the saturation of those and the right or decrease if you wanted. <laughs> increase for me. Um, on the right hand side, this is basically the, um, the luminance of that. So I'm actually going to pull the luminance down a little bit while increasing the saturation that is in the highlight. So as you can see, I'm adding a little bit of kind of pinkish red. Let me turn that off. There it is before. And that's what it's like now that I've done just the highlights, but I still got a little bit more to do. I'm going to go slightly to the blue here in the mid-tones, and I'm gonna bring those up just a tiny bit, and I'm gonna do a similar thing kind of here with the shadows, slightly left, so slightly blue, and a tiny bit of saturation there. I like my color, it, it just is what it is. So um, that's that, now I'm gonna get into selective color. Selective color is somewhat accurately named. It, it allows you to select colors, but when I hear selective color, I think of removing all colors except for one. Uh, so like, hey, a black and white photo with a red umbrella, that kind of thing. So it, it throws me off, but selective color is HSL, right? Hue, saturation, luminance. You've got all the different color channels here. And what I want to do is get into the blue and it's a little too much blue. So I'm going to take the saturation slightly down. And in the pink over here on the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and bring that saturation slightly up. So once again, I'm just kind of accentuating some of those warmer kind of pinkish uh, tones that are in that sunset. And they've got some cool brushes over here. They've got this one here. And if you hover over it, you can see it says sharpen. So that allows you to basically apply some sharpening. And so I'm going to reduce the size of my mouse a little bit. And I'm going to come in and just crisp up Haystack Rock just a little bit. It is kind of dark, so you're not going to really notice it that well. But let me zoom in. So there it is. Let me show you the before and after. So 
Before, you can see it's a bit softer, and now it's a little bit crunchier. So this is something I wanted to do. I'm gonna go back to Zoom to Fit. Uh, and this one right below it is Soften. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm actually just gonna slightly soften up the, um, the water here, simply because I like that. I think the skies are plenty soft because it's a long exposure. And actually, I'm gonna go back to Sharpen, and I'm actually gonna add some sharpening over here to this sand because I kind of like that. It's a little bit of like, um, a, you know, hard, uh, you know, crunchy, sharp, for lack of a better word, and then blur where you get the water, and then hard again with the rock, you know, sharp, and then blurry again with this guy. So it's kind of like a staged kind of thing, like sharp, blurred, sharp, blurred, a little bit. But that is uh, my full edit in the traditional sense. So let me show you that before and after. That's my before, there you go, completely unedited, and there it is after, much more vibrant. Now what I wanna do is go over here, I've got an exact copy of the photo. You can create tabs and add another photo, but if it's the exact same photo, you gotta rename it. So I made a copy of it. Instead of dragging the same photo twice, I made a copy of it, and it's called copy, the exact same photo, but it allows you to have these two tabs open if you want to. Now for the creative stuff, what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna go down to this next tab, which is effects. And there are a lot of effects here. If you want uh, some more videos around Pixelmator Pro, let me know. And specifically, if you want me to talk about the effects, there's honestly a ton of them. Um, they've got these great presets. You can just kind of click through and you can see lots of different looks. You know, they may or may not look good on your photo. Just kind of depends, uh, not Mandala. I wanted to show you photographic. I think some of these are pretty cool. You can see they got these little bokeh balls. They've got light leaks and things like that. I'm gonna hit reset because I don't wanna do any of that. I'm just gonna add some effects myself and I am gonna start, I've gotta look at my notes. I'm gonna start with a light leak and I'm gonna use this nebula and I'm gonna go, the amount is actually gonna be zero, but sunny, and let me click that to hide that. By the way, this is called an effects rope and it basically allows you to move that effect around um, and resize it and that sort of thing. You're not seeing it because I've got it at zero, but if I moved it up a lot, you'll see the light leak and then I can adjust it with that effect rope. But what I wanna do is get this sunniness and sunny, I'm gonna to go to about a 70. So this is giving a really warm kind of color cast to the photo. So if I turn this off, that's the base photo unedited. And there it is with the light leak, even though the light leak I've got at zero, this sunniness slider still works. And I've gone, uh, you know, basically, I'm actually gonna take it down just a little bit, maybe about a 65 but it created a bit of a warm effect in the photo. So I kind of like that. The next effect I wanna add is also in this uh, stylized category and it's called Bloom. And what I'm gonna do here is my radius is gonna be about an 80. So I'm going kind of high on that and I'm gonna move the intensity up to about a 60. So if I turn this off, let me show you what it did. There it is before the Bloom. And then when I turn this back on, there it is. It's kind of a softening. Some of the highlights are popping a little bit. There it is before again. And after, it kind of creates a, almost a little bit of a moody kind of haze, just something I like. I, I saw it in a number of the different presets that are up here in the effects tab, and I just tried it. I kind of like it. Again, I'm going for kind of a non-traditional, kind of a creative edit here, so I just thought it worked. Now I'm gonna add one more effect, and I'm gonna go back to light leaks, and this time I'm gonna get this Orion, and this time I will use the effects rope. So this basically allows you to rotate that and resize. You can see as I shrink it, these little bokeh balls that are in this light leak are just kind of changing. So you can see how you do that. And you know, I don't really have a particular plan for this. I think maybe, I think maybe something about like, I don't know, I keep changing my mind. Maybe like that, you can also shift it around. In fact, I'm actually gonna increase that so that it, maybe something more like that. So it covers more of the photo. You can always click the little, uh, you can see the rope, it just literally it comes across this filter and you can just click that to hide it once you've kind of got that in place. But it is basically, basically the mechanism by which you place the, the effect. In this case, it's a light leak. So it helps you adjust the size, the rotation and the placement of that. And then that, you know when it's turned on and then cl you can click it again to turn it off and basically have that in place. And in this case, uh, I'm gonna leave Sunny at 25. I think that looks good. Uh, and that's, uh, that's all I'm gonna do on the effects tab. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this other tab and go into kind of your basic adjustments here. So what I wanna do is go into white balance and I'm actually gonna cool it off a little bit. I kinda like that combination of the warm and the cool. So like a negative 20. I don't wanna overdo the, the warmth, but I don't wanna bring back too much blue because I am going for a little bit different kind of look here. But uh, a little bit of a temperature adjustment there. And then I'm gonna go into hue and saturation. And I'm just gonna bump that saturation up because hey, 
you know, if we're getting creative, why not just add more color? And that's just because, again, I like it. So that is really my edit for this one. It's not a traditional kind of landscape. It's not something you would normally do, but I don't know. I kind of like the light leak. I like the colors and that sort of thing, but let me show you what we started with. Oh, you know what? That's So when you hit this uh, before and after, it's showing you the before and after for the tab that you're on. So I would have to turn this off, turn that off, go back over here, and then hit that. That's the photo that I started with after adjusting for effects and adding these uh, light leaks and the bloom and then going over here and using a little bit of a white balance and hue and saturation adjustment, I came up with that. So fun, different. Let me show you the two different so you can kind of compare them. There's my traditional edit, fairly colorful, maybe very colorful, depends on what your opinion is. Fairly colorful, uh, saturated, but I like it. And in fact, looking at it now, I actually think I might go a little bit warmer. So I might come back up here to temperature and just pull that a little bit to the right, just to get a little bit more of that kind of look and a little bit less blue. I think I kind of like that a little bit better. And if you can't tell, I change my mind all the time, and that's okay, my friends. When you're editing, I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I've taken a photo and edited and loved it and shared it. And then 20 minutes or 20 days or 20 weeks later, I completely edit it differently. Hey, that's the beauty of digital photography. You can just come in, swap things around, change it up, and do it differently the next time. But uh, there's my new adjusted version of that. And then here's my kind of creative version. And all I really wanted to do in this video is number one, kind of jump back into Pixel Meter Pro, have a little bit of fun, let you know that I'm still gonna do tutorials around it. I need to kind of work it back into my rotation. If there's certain things around it you'd like me to explore, to be clear, I'm not an expert in the product. I'm learning it. There is so much, and there are different workspaces you can set up. I mean, it does text, uh, like you can add text. That's not that complicated, but it's got layers. It's got uh, lots of different tools. It's got graphics. I mean, honestly, it is basically like a Photoshop sort of product, but I think um, certainly cheaper. Um, and frankly, I think a bit more intuitive and easier. It's very Mac-centric, of course, because it is a Mac-only app, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of uh, a lot of power and a lot of creative things you can do. I was just kind of having fun experimenting. Wanted to share that with you guys. So one more time, there's my traditional edit and there's my creative edit. I think I like the traditional one best, but you know what? It's fun. In fact, I actually think, you know what? Something like this where you have light leaks or bokeh balls, things like that, that would probably play better on like a blue hour cityscape uh, street scene kind of shot. Not something you would traditionally use on a landscape. But hey, that's the fun of photography. I did it anyway. So I'll go back to this one so we can close on that. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, it maybe gives you some ideas and maybe gives you some hints about how some of these tools work. I'll keep diving in and sharing some different uh, workflow examples, things like that. You guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Have fun editing out there. I'll see you soon. And adios.